I am Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Olga Meredith of In the Heights. And Olga, I'm going to have to just dive right into Paciencia y Fe with you. You're a big number in this show because um, this song is your probably biggest moment in the, the um, film. And it's reframed in this from where it was in the stage version as a really this woman looking back on her life uh, right before the end of her life. And it's incredibly powerful. What was your first reaction when you saw that there was that shift happening with your song? Well, first of all, I think that it was a brilliant choice uh, for John Chu, Kiara Alegria Hudas, and Lin Manuel Miranda to choose to change the spot because, as you know, the stage version that happened in the first act very early in the story. And so, but changing it to where, where she, Abuela Claudia, looks back on her life just was so effective, I thought. And um, it was even more heart-wrenching, I think. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I personally have trouble watching myself because you, you asked when I saw it. Um, I have trouble watching myself. I, was, I, I had a hard time watching it, but I thought that that change was just a very wonderful uh, change. Did you have to, because there's that different circumstance there, did you have to sort of separate what you did from the stage version on Broadway and off Broadway from this film version? Did it require something new to add to it? You know, nobody has asked me that question in, in that way, Sam. Um, when, when I did it on Broadway, it's just kind of like, oh my God, I won the lottery. That's great news, right? In this way, the way that they have it in the film, it's really a, a retrospective of her life. She's going back, basically it's, it's before someone dies, how they, they look back at their life. And I feel like it had more weight. It was more, um, just more emotional. And, um, and also be, because the camera is so close there, you have to, you have to be so in it. And also you have to be so concentrated because they shoot out a sequence and that number took three days and uh, uh, two different locations. And so I had to stay focused on where I was in that segment of the song for, for to pick up, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So it, it was very, very challenging to do it on film versus yeah. stage and I felt it had more weight, it had more, more, uh, more emotion, more depth and uh, because of the change of, 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 of placement and also the fact that you're shooting it on film which you have uh, to do out of sequence. Yeah, the out of sequence I feel like would be incredibly difficult not to play the arc of it. What, what tricks are you using to keep yourself, it, it's an insanely emotional, number how do you keep yourself located in it across a random well, order that's a secret sam <laughs> and i'll ask that no i'm kidding um well when i sang that song in the theater or when i sing that song from beginning to end as you're supposed to right to have the the follow through for a story like that i <laughs> i say this to people and they go okay I felt like, I feel like I'm in a trance. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> because it, um, yeah, I, I, you, you can't phone it in. You have to kind of be in this woman's story of what she went through. And I kind of used my background as an immigrant, uh, what my parents went through. Uh, and so, Basically, for the film, I just had to make, I would make notes for myself. Okay, this just happened. I just talked about this. And uh, in other words, this just happened. So here I am here. And it's like I had to make copious notes for myself so that I could keep track of where I was. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask about your experiences too, because you mentioned your parents. Um, because one line that, I mean, I've listened to the 
Broadway cast recording so many times, but one line of your song stuck out to me and resonated more, which was the, um, I've spent my life inheriting dreams from you as you're talking to your mother, because the dreams are much more central of these characters rather than the lottery element in the film. So I know your family is from Cuba. Um, how did you sort of incorporate that element of dreams, family dreams into your performance? It's funny, my mom just passed away recently, but the, uh, the day Sondheim died. Oh, so wow. I've been thinking a lot about my mom recently. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been flooded with all kinds of memories and what, what I got out of what my parents instilled in me was assimilation. This is our new country. We have to assimilate. We have to learn the land. They already knew English from Cuba. Um, and they studied, uh, my father studied in the States. My mother studied in Havana. Um, but they instilled uh, assimilation and excellence. And you work hard and you try your very best. If you fail, you pick yourself up and you try again. But I think that th my parents instilled that in me that I, I, I needed to work hard and uh, be very welcoming to this country that took us in and very grateful for this country and to, um, to work alongside with it, to contribute to this country, to, to make a, a difference, but, but most of all to assimilate and to be the best you can be and definitely try to reach for your dreams. Important lessons. I'm sorry to hear about your mother. Yes, um, thank, you. thank you. It's very sad. Yeah. Um, but she, um, I, I, uh, she, I got so much from her, you know, she was very strong and, uh, and I, she's in me now. Yeah. So Cintra, that's a parallel maybe now with the Abuela Claudia story, you know? Yeah. I think that's a, something that really comes through the screen. Um, yeah. and this is a, a character that you have really lived with for a long time because the film was, uh, I, I think at least 10 years after the Broadway one and you did the off Broadway production before yeah. that. So what to you is the biggest evolution in this character in the way you played it? Are you notice, did you notice major differences in the way you played her on film? Let's see, well, at the very, very, very beginning, this was in the workshops before Off-Broadway, I was playing the mother and they couldn't find a, a, an older actress to sing this song, which is very, very, very difficult emotionally, technically, breath-wise. And I think it was Chiara Alegria Hudas who said, let's give Olga a try. And I was like, guys, no, I, I'm very happy with my role. I don't wanna play the abuela, I'm too young. You know, I was kind of like <laughs> offended, you know? <laughs> and I said, well, I'll audition and you're, you know, they're gonna see that it's not gonna work, but I'll, I will audition. And of course the rest is history. And, and then I had to kind of step up to the plate to play this, this woman, you know, cause I wanted to do, I wanted to give her these, uh, I wanted to portray her with all these qualities. And, and I guess at the very beginning, I, I was just trying to give her, you know, the best, you know, try to please the team and sing that song and get through it without fainting, which I almost fainted many times on top of Alex Slackamore, our conductor, because that last note, fe paciencia y fe. And it's like, I many times I saw black and, wow. and I would just stop singing because otherwise I would have gone. <clears throat> um, but I think what happened is as I got older, as I got older, just as just being human, we all grow as human beings. We all have, we all change. We have realizations. We have, uh, we have relationships. We have breakups. We have, uh, you know, spats with our family. There's, there's, there's life that happens. Life, and uh, you grow as a person. And I just was older. I was an older human being and an actress and. Just for the sake, just because of that, I, I gave it more, there was more there to, there was more material there to, to use. And 
there was more of Olga, there was more of me to funnel that in into the character. Well, I'm glad you didn't faint. I, I know the one of the things is different too is some of the, the musical dynamics in the, the song are different too. Like you start in a much more falsetto placement at that song was, uh, yeah. what was the process like of figuring out how those changes were going to be different on camera? Well, you, you know, for the theater, you have to project to the last row. And so you, you know, and you always have to incorporate the balconies and make sure everybody gets their shot at watching a show, even if they don't have the money to, to be in the orchestra seats and the, in, in the good seats. But when you have a camera right here, you can't, you, you're, almost, uh, you're almost listening to the person's thoughts, you know? And so that first opening on Broadway was very loud and powerful. And, uh, you know, it was kind of, I, here's, here's this character singing an aria with her house coat on. She's old, but listen to what I have to say, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, in the movie, it's very subtle. And so that they, when I sang the song, they said immediately, no, you know what? That's not gonna work. So let's, let's bring it way down. And so that's when I did the falsetto and it really worked because it's you, you're just going with her. It's her thoughts, it's her memories, it's her going through her life. So it's more in, in, in interior, inside. Yeah. And I really, I know you mentioned it's very hard to do things out of order with all the different set locations. But one of the things I did really enjoy about this is getting to see the, all the like rich details inside her apartment, it feels like such a lived in space and you really understand how much it is a space for her community and her taking care of people. How, how did having those locations affect you and inform you? Well, Nelson Coates, who's, who was the art director, uh, he was very adamant. Uh, he wanted everything to be authentic. And so he came to my house. And I just started opening up my photo albums and my mementos from my own family. And, and so I, we helped each other to create that space. And some of those pictures are my own pictures and uh, you know, the frames and, and little things that I brought from home. And I told him that I would wear my father's uh, under, my, under my costume on Broadway. I had my father's you know, little, uh, Virgin Mary uh, chain here, you know, with a safety pin to kind of keep me very authentic. And, um, and so he kind of took all that information and we were here for hours, you know. I remember I served them the lemonade. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and so th they created like a real homey place that was half Olga mine and half the the character that we created of Abuela Claudia. And uh, yeah, and we wanted to make it very, uh, very homey because that was the place where everybody came to eat, for advice, to just chat, to just visit. And I, you know, Abuela Claudia, the character was always available to everybody in that community. Since she didn't have any children, those were her children, you know, yeah. so. Um, and you have continued to your collaboration with Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, you're also on the Encanto soundtrack with the singing voice of, of that abuela in that movie. Um, what is it like having such a long-standing collaboration with him? Well, I love him so much. We, he, he has, he's the king of the world now and so well-deserved. And uh, we, we became so close doing that show on Broadway. You know, I would, I took care of him. He took care of me. I would, I would go to Chinatown and get these herbs for the voice. And I'd bring him these, these, uh, you know, ginger teas and things that I would get in, you know, <laughs> you know, cause Broadway eight shows a week is very, very demanding on the voice, on the body. And so he knows that he can call me at the last minute and I will jump through hoops for him. And, uh, and I, and I'm just thrilled that he, you know, he just did tick, tick, boom. And he, he will continue to grow and to, 
succeed and he's just brilliant and I'm I'm just happy to have that uh, relationship and and have him in my life because I would I love to co to collaborate with him yeah and he knows that you know he just says one word I get it boom and it's quick and then for the Encanto you know he needed uh me to sing the the songs and one two three and in three days it was done because we have that rapport and we have that understanding and it's just very very easy to work together with him because wow. I, I just, I know him so well. Wow. I also realized both of those uh, movies reunited you uh, with Stephanie Beatrice. And I, yes. I remember I talked to her a long time ago uh, and she was telling me how she, she, you know, demanded that you be there as her mother for Brooklyn Nine-Nine after working with yes. her previously. Uh, yes. And I think that sort of thing lends itself the in the heights feels like a very joyous movie it feels would it be safe to say it was very joyous on set because it feels like a big group of people who oh love God, each other and that comes through you are absolutely right i call it it was like a joy ride on set off set and when i and when you watch the movie it's like it's just pure joy you know and um i hope people get to see it because we need we need this we need this message in our lives. It, it's a universal theme. Doesn't matter where you come from. Uh, it's shot in Washington Heights, but it can be any community. And the themes, I went to the dentist the other day and the, the assistant was Russian. And she said, oh my God, I loved In the Heights. I could relate to it. And I went, tell me about it. And she said, well, I'm an immigrant from Russia. And I, could, and I went, there you go. It's, it's a universal story. Yeah. And um, I wanted to ask, because you've become very synonymous with this character, having played it for so long, you're the only principal from the Broadway one to do the film. Um, what are you looking at next? What, what are your you know, big hopes for what comes next? What roles do you want to explore? Okay, I just finished a movie uh, that we shot in Oregon called Somebody I Used to Know, a romantic mm -hmm. comedy. That was a lot of fun. And um, I want to continue doing musical musicals on film and uh and film in general um people ask me if i'll go back to broadway and for now i don't have any plans to come back to broadway but you never know if there's a if there's the right uh the right role or the right project you never know but right now i'm focusing on 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 film and uh that's what i'm there's, there's a movie that's in the works right now, but I can't talk about it because it's in the works. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm doing, you know, in this part of my life, who knows, you know, later on. Well, we'll look forward to whatever, whatever it is that comes, comes next for you. Um, I really appreciate you sitting down with me and discussing this film. If you're out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. There are plenty more videos like this throughout the season. Olga, thank you so much again. It was great to talk to you. Thank you, Sam. Likewise. Thank you very much.